You know, sometimes a unit might need one extra push to become really good at what they do, or maybe they're already good at what they do, but one extra addition to what they're already doing makes them even more obnoxious to deal with, or just incredibly good in general. This is the history of units that became amazing with a single update, or I guess skill, I haven't decided on the title. I think one of the easiest units that can be started out with is going to be Brave Marth. Him alongside the other CY05 units got refines relatively early comparatively to most other units in the game. September is when they usually do CYO refines, but we got to a point where they were just skipping so much far ahead because the other units weren't keeping up as fast. And some of the concerns that came about this was, are they going to get really mediocre refines because they skipped ahead so far? And I mean, some of them did. And Brave Marth wasn't really the exception. All intents and purposes, I don't think the refine was that great. You get extra DR, which can be useful at times. Extra stats, I mean, it's still extra stats, so you couldn't go wrong with it but it really wasn't pushing him over the edge anyway and no guard which was arguably completely worthless for his niche because the whole thing of being instantaneous vantage is that you usually want to proc a special on that single hit and really it just didn't address most of his issues that being said it only took the addition of winter dimitri to get into the game to give him the addition of no quarter which is an inheritable piercing special to any sword lance or axe i think excluding armors which for all intents and purposes really doesn't matter for them but it was already a nice step in the right direction for him because at least now he can secure damage output with a significant degree because he had vantage built into his weapon pre refined by the way he was still also able to use null sea disrupt but then also in the following month we got the addition of emblem marth and that more or less just cemented his role as an aetherid's offense vantage unit even though with the likes of sanaki and hardy bearing roaming around like crazy on top of all the significant debuffs in the scenario where you could either get around it or you're just not dealing with it he's probably one of the better aetherid's offense vantage units that we have in the game and i guess the way i would put it is that you can take away the refine and sure it would maybe hinder a bit of his performance mainly because you are losing out on attack but generally speaking he was going to perform mostly the same without it anyway but going from a really mediocre refine to becoming a really good vantage unit with all in the course of arguably just one update because you could still use brave robin to get it going is pretty good in my books although speaking of emblem marth i think one other shout out definitely has to go to brave gulvig who is still a relatively decent Aetherite's offense scale force unit, but I think with the addition of Emblem Marth, it makes your pre-charges for something like AoE specials and generally getting around units a lot easier, especially since she is in an archetype where getting pulses isn't exactly the easiest thing for her, and now you just don't have to sacrifice nearly as much. Emblem Marth in general just boosted a lot of units performances, but I think there's definitely going to be units that definitely stand out regardless of that. But even outside of Emblem Marth, we had the addition of Kronia and her refine, which I think in a similar vein to Brave Marth, while she did have access to the likes of piercing specials and she still relied on the instantaneous one tap potential of what she could do as a vantage unit, one of the biggest things was definitely getting the charges and giving up her B slot, because realistically the only way she was going to be able to spam specials is if she ran special spiral in her B slot, and that really wasn't the most feasible thing for her role. But then came Brave Robin to save the day once again, because Rally Spectrum is just a really good C slot. That, on top of the fact that we did get Fatal Smoke 4, which I wouldn't say is as necessary, but it's still a nice thing to be added on top of that. It really just made it so Kronia can spam lethality with no issue whatsoever. Although similarly to a lot of other Vantage units, you're going to get gimped by anything that has Hardy Bearing, and she really isn't any exception, but at least now, her damage output and kill prowess is going to be significantly higher than it ever was. Just make sure she's not going up against anybody with sweep effects. Although if we're going back to refines that were literally whatever, let's go to Legendary Elliewood. I know that statement may sound really, really dumb because you're probably thinking, oh, but that C slot is good. And you're right. That C slot is good. The weapon refine is literally whatever. The C slot alone made him one of the best support units for a very long time because granting anybody bonus doubler, null panic, and kinto one, and it can be granted to every single unit if they're matching attack, is extremely powerful. And to put it into perspective, they released another version of him with the same gimmick. The only difference is that he traded out Kanto 1 support for way better combat, but most people didn't use him because the Kanto 1 is so, so powerful. Everything that the C slot encompasses is extremely 
extremely good for somebody like Legendary Eliwood. And that alone is what really pushed him over the edge for that. But as far as refines that were actually really good, uh, let's talk about Edelgard. I think for somebody like Edelgard who got a Gale Forest refine on top of other extra stuff is that the big issue I found is that you did have to use her as the Gale Force beacon, which in some aspects wasn't really the worst thing, all things considered. But I found that it was a lot easier to just make her go in with Wings of Mercy. But the problem initially is that she has a solo condition for her Gale Force, which made it so going in with Wings of Mercy 3 more or less disabled the weapon from going off. But we did eventually get the addition of Legendary Hinoka, and that more or less just solved all the issues because now it's a two space warp. That being said, you can still use her as the beacon and it would make her very competent, but I just find this is way safer and triple Gale Force is so triple Gale Force. So I mean, I mean, well, how bad could it really be? But into the era of brain dead degeneracy, we have Lucia and Lucia is one of those units, in my opinion, that was extremely broken from the get go, but ultimately got hard countered with the addition of stuff such as physical no follow, magical no follow, and a lot of other shred that we eventually got, which in my opinion is entirely her fault because you couldn't proc specials against her whatsoever. That being said, a lot of points of contention came from the fact that her damage reduction was so highly based on her speed stat, which some units could definitely outspeed, although for all intents and purposes, by that point, it was like maybe 15 to 20 units that could potentially outspeed her and then like 900 plus that couldn't. So you tell me how bad that really was in the grand scheme of things, but it was still a complaint nonetheless. That until we got the addition of Brave Robin. And yeah, we're all going back to Brave Robin because Brave Robin is so good. He introduced the Gambit 4, which basically meant she could get the same level of damage reduction with no condition whatsoever. Because she wasn't proccing specials anyway, she more or less just had unconditionally high amounts of damage reduction. Nowadays, she isn't nearly as strong because everything has passive shred as is, but for all intents and purposes, she could still do a lot of work. And Lucia with Gambit was probably one of the most brain dead things of last year. On a similar vein of like really bulky units, we had Har and Spring Maria with their true damage reduction weapons, which was definitely not easily taken advantage of because of the lack of damage reduction skills that they had access to. It more or less took the addition of Guard Bearing 4 to make them really pop off because no matter what, as long as they were enemy facing, they are going to be shrugging off most amounts of damage because you take the percent damage reduction that you would get from Guard Bearing and then after that, you would reduce it by the flat amount that they got from their weapons. And because both of them had good defense stats, you could easily take what could be 50 plus damage into something into the single digits. It was extremely obnoxious. And nowadays they're still relatively good, but their niches aren't nearly as coveted, mostly because we're in very, very high threat range meta and it's something they don't really do well against. And you know, speaking of high threat range, you guys like my transitions? I think they're funny. You just going like, well, since I talked about this, here's this. Yeah, I, I can be self-aware. I'm being meta in my own video. Anyway, Reinhardt. I think everyone knows the story of Reinhardt by now. They introduced skill inheritance. They gave him death blow all sorts of stuff and he was really zappy zappy because he had a player phase brave to him. I think really the one thing that definitely pushed him over the edge though was quick and pulse and the tempest trials because it just meant he could always get a guaranteed special on every second hit. That ended a lot of runs for a lot of people especially at a time where damage reduction properties weren't exactly common and really the biggest counters at that point in time especially with brave Lynn was something like Cecilia or Indigo with Gron Raven. For all intents and purposes he did a lot of work and now he just kind of sits on the Bench, but he was good for his time. And now we have a rearmed Reinhardt who has the same gimmick in his A slot. Well, not entirely same, but he gets player phase brave in his A slot, which is always really good. You can give him arcane euphoria and he just gets a load of true damage because he gets it from the weapon and he gets it from the A slot. And you can still run desperation for and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Basically he hits stupidly hard and you can relive your 2017 fantasy of just molly whopping pretty much everything in the game. The same really couldn't be said for somebody like fallen Dimitri, of course, because when he debuted, I think the biggest threat we had was Fallen Edelgard, and for good reason too, Triple Gale Force at that point with really good bulk and damage reduction was very strong, on top of all the healing she got from her B-slot. Anyway, the point being, Fallen Dimitri came out, and his weapon was awful, but that B-slot was extremely, extremely strong. Being Kanto remaining plus one with fire sweep and stats, that was an incredibly good B-slot. So naturally, the easiest thing you could have done was ditch his weapon entirely and keep the B-slot, and then give him something that increases damage output tenfold, and usually that came along the lines of Ninja Naginata, because I don't think anybody was ever really gonna argue against player phase Brave with no ability to counter back and then Kantoing away after. Very strong combination overall. I don't think it necessarily made a meta per se, but definitely made him 
him so much more threatening than he ever was with his initial pure F weapon. Although as far as pure F weapons that were good and worth mentioning, uh, Kagero's Dart. At a time where damage reduction wasn't exactly that common and piercing was basically non-existent, player phasing with 50% damage reduction, especially at a time where, and I forgot to mention this part, no follow-up was not common at all, meant that Kagero could easily just initiate combat with an impact A skill and always take 50% less damage in the player phase. And I mean, stat-wise, she wasn't exactly the best, but 50% goes a long way for any unit that just doesn't have stats. Even the ones that do have stats, reducing it by any flat amount is always going to be extremely strong. And this was on top of being an infantry unit, so even when they dropped Harmonic Mia, she was still significantly better because she was able to charge up specials and get damage out so much faster. And as for other really good PRFs that some were refund based, some really weren't, we have Rutger, Ascended Fur, Larce, and Ascended Marita, and they all hinge on the idea of Times Pulse 4. Rutger at the time where he could use something like Vital Astra and get damage reduction scaling off the special with very high consistency on top of extremely good damage output and a free B slot more or less because he was basically what Arcane Devourer was before that became an inheritable sword. It was insanely cracked, especially for a free to play. But with the breath he got in his weapon, damage reduction from the weapon, on top of damage reduction you got from the special, you basically had a free B-slot to run pretty much whatever, which could have easily just been, you know, I guess more damage reduction or healing or whatever the case might be, and it made him extremely obnoxious to deal with if you didn't have a piercing special. That was the only way you were really going to get around him by that point. But unlike Rutger, Ascended Fur, Larce, and Marita didn't really have to worry about that, and this is mostly in tandem with Emblem Marth, and that's just because double slaying with times pulls built into to their weapon meant that they could always have an instant godlike reflexes up permanently and they have a free c slot for extra stats or gimmicks or whatever the case might be so their general ceiling was so much higher otherwise we have yuri and i mean at the time of release he was probably one of the most broken units of all time in the game because fixed canto 2 on the range unit with very good skill accessibility was absurd and really the one thing that made him kind of less annoying to deal with was the addition of canto control especially when we had reagan and a lot of the other units with fixed canto it became really difficult to deal with a lot of them because there was really no stopping them from going in and running away because you couldn't reach them afterward but canto control made it so he couldn't cancel away after so really the next best thing he could have done was go in with a disarm trap set and disarm trap is probably what kept him super relevant for a long while even through the safe for breaking traps because you can easily foul place somebody in you don't have to worry about anti-warping stuff from something like an ard gatekeeper or valentine's because it's all movement based and because of his relatively decent enough HP he could also get around hex traps especially with disarm trap 4 and even if he isn't as good in combat as he once was he's still going to be a decent enough unit for getting gale force strats off the ground even though you could still use melee flyers or anybody with super warping and guidance but I'll get into that in a second Yuri definitely fell off from what made him extremely busted but he's still relatively decent enough in my opinion but otherwise the last three units I do want to talk about are Citrine, Wind Claude, and Legendary Azura. All these units that you're probably looking at, like they're already good. What made them better? Or is there anything that really pushed them over the edge to make them super, super good? And I mean, you could probably argue Wind Claude not, but I'll get into his in a second. Citrine, most of it really boiled down to Attack Oath Echo, in my opinion. And that mostly made it so you could stack up even more visible buffs with her in the C slot, preferably something like Ledge. So that way you could get warping for everybody, breath for everybody. But really, the biggest thing always came from the fact that her tome is just extremely cracked giving out every single visible buff that isn't extra movement or pathfinder to every single unit within two spaces of her and it's only going to age better as we get more c slots and echo skills that grant additional statuses but in my opinion the combination of pledge with attack oath echo is way too good to pass up unless maybe infantry no follow four but that isn't something you necessarily need in my opinion as for when claude he was basically the de facto nuke for a long while because spamming two lethalities in combat was extremely Extremely good. There was always some counterplay to it, that being in the form of double Aegis with Hardy Fighter and countering back so that you could charge it back. To get around that though, you could easily just run Guard Seal on them and they couldn't charge it up afterward, which meant pretty much every single armor was dead by that 
point. Now, granted, this isn't something you can really do nowadays against most competent armors because now they can run Marth Emblem and now they can always get a one cooldown Aegis. It's not something they have to worry about nowadays, but back then you could easily get most armors with the guard seal because they had to rely on two cooldown specials. And as for legendary Azura, I mean, she was a menace on debut and she's still extremely good to this day because granting extra movement is still an incredibly good offensive tool. But back then when giving out visible buffs wasn't nearly as easy, you could run a dance seal and it would still activate her gimmick of giving out a bunch of stats regardless. And this wasn't intended, of course, but the devs didn't care. So they said, you know what? Here's an additional buff to a good dancer. And as far as unit specific ones, these are probably some of the more notable ones that come to mind. There are still class specific ones, of course, like melee infantry with the disencounter melee seal. So they can run godlike reflexes loops with finish and just have really absurd sustainability. Melee flyers and aerial maneuvers with guidance so you could gale force warp around. Armors and hardy fighter because hardy fighter is totally not broken and came out way too early into the game's lifespan. Yep, totally not. Also, shout out to saves for being extremely, extremely potent. I can't even imagine what kind of meta we'd be in without them. But even on another side tangent with armors, axe armors with arcane therima and guard echo is really busted because now the foe just can't trigger a special whatsoever unless they have no guard. But because they have tempo themselves, they can easily run Marth Emblem and always loop Aegis and run Disencounter Melee. They're probably doing the best out of almost any generic archetype at the moment. It's kind of nuts. Dragons and Scowl plus Guard Echo is also a really nice combination because it means that unless you have tempo, you're just not getting a special off whatsoever. In a similar vein to saves to armors, we have Guidance to Flyers, which is also just an incredibly useful tool. Also, something I forgot to mention in the other list, which I was kind of debating on it, was Gatekeeper and Guidance because Guidance wasn't necessarily that intrinsically benefited him, but it made it so when we shifted to the, all the warping meta that his utility skyrocketed because he was the only one at the time outside of Mar who had the ability to shut off all sorts of warping and could run additional support. That on top of the fact that he's still the only unit in the game that doesn't rely on the visible buff or any sort of terrain to get the anti-warp going, which still even to this day makes him one of the better Aether Raid's defense threats, especially against Gale Force strategies. Uh, shout out the Gatekeeper. But otherwise we have Red Tomes and Devoted Basket because Flare Damage is extremely broken. Ooh, I love Flare Damage so, so fun. It's so fun. You can take 30 plus free damage for just initiating combat and then the foe dies, I guess, because Occultist Strike also grants true damage. Other than that, I mean, Emblem Marth is just a net benefit to most units regardless because slaying is simple, but a very, very strong effect. Also, shout out the close word for giving me a thousand feathers. And really, when it comes to the history of units that became amazing with maybe a single update or skill, these are probably some of the most notable ones that came to mind. And I'm sure I probably missed a couple because, I mean, there's so many units in the game and so many metas and all sorts of stuff over the course of seven plus years. So if I did miss anything worthwhile, let me know down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you later.